Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's look at three methods for how to build a nice and simple scope zoom effect. Now this is perfect for any game where you have a reference scope with some zoom, or maybe just any game where you have some binoculars where you want the player to be able to see further. Now like I said, I'm going to cover multiple methods because there's multiple approaches we can take. One is extremely simple but doesn't look very good. Another one is quite a bit more performant but might not look too good. And the final one looks best, but also has a certain cost. So let's look at all of those methods, and then it's up to you to decide which one makes more sense for your game. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a Builder Defender game using c -sharp, just like I make my own Steam games, or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. Okay, so let's look at various methods for achieving a zoom effect. Over here is my demo scene. I've got a simple character and I can just look around. I've got my sniper rifle and I can press a button in order to bring it up. Now for the assets over here, this is the Cinti Studios Battle Royale pack. There's a link in the description if you want to get it. And for my rifle script, it's very basic. All it does is just listen to some input and then it sets the animator parameter to play the animation pulling the rifle up or down. And finally, just got a bunch of events which we're going to hook into in order to do our various methods. Now, if you don't know about events, check out my video on it. They are super useful. Okay, so let's start by looking at the very first approach, which is the easiest one and possibly the very first thing you would try. Now, as you know, cameras have a certain field of view and the easiest way to zoom is simply lower that field of view. So for this first method, let's first get a reference to our camera. And when the rifle comes up, we simply change the field of view. Let's put it on a lower amount. And when the rifle goes down, then we simply reset it. And then I just added some buttons in order to zoom in and out, so we can also modify these. So that's it, extremely simple. Let's see how this looks. Okay, so here it is, everything looks normal. I bring the rifle up and there you go, it zooms in. So the camera is lowering the field of view, so everything is zoomed in. And as I press the button while I'm here, zoom in even further, zoom back and so on. And yep, there you go, it does work. Now to make this look a bit better, we can animate it with lerp, just like I covered in another video. So here, just some basic lerp logic. There it is, pretty simple. I just got a target field of view and that's the thing that changes. And then I'm just using a methaf.lerp in order to lerp from the current one onto the target. So here it is, looking normal. I bring it up and there you go, a nice and smooth zoom. And I zoom in even further and there you go, nice and smooth. All right, so here is the very first method. As you can see, it's extremely simple. All it does is it just zooms in the main camera. Now the main benefit of this method is it's extremely performant. So you don't have any extra shaders, there's no extra cameras. It is also extremely simple to implement. You'll literally just change the camera FOV and that's really it. But the main downside is that it doesn't look too good. Ideally, you would want just the scope to be zoomed in, but in reality, the whole screen zooms in. So that doesn't look too good, but still, this is the very first easiest method, which does work. Now for the second method, for this one, we're going to use a shader in order to zoom in on the area behind it. Now I actually made a separate video on this topic because it turned out quite a bit more tricky than I expected. So in order to make this work, I just place down a sphere directly inside of the scope. So there we go, it's a physical object inside of there. Now this is a sphere, I just made it really flat. And then it is using this custom shader. And as you can see, it's a very simple shader, pretty small. What it does is it takes the scene color. So that is the colors of the scene on top of this object. Then it uses the tiling and offset mode and modifies the tiling in order to actually zoom in. And finally, the object screen position. So this is the tricky thing. You can go watch that other video to learn how this works in more detail. Like I mentioned in that video, the main issue was with the object screen position. So this needs to be dynamically modified as the scope moves within the screen. So for that, I just have this other script. All it does is just grab the camera, world to screen point, and feeds it onto the shader. So this shader won't zoom in on everything behind it, so it just needs to be positioned directly inside of the scope. And for the logic itself, over here the scope is just attached to the object, so we don't need to actually modify anything here to the script. The only thing we need is over here on the zoom out and zoom in in order to modify the parameter on the actual shader. So 
So we just do this in order to modify the float variable inside the shader. Okay, so that's it, let's test. All right, so here it is. And as I bring the rifle up, yep, look at that nice zoom. So I can name anywhere and get a really nice zoomed in view. For example, I wanna zoom in on that explosive down there and there you go, I can do a really nice zoom in. And if I press the button, I can zoom in even further. All right, awesome. So it does provide a nice zoomed in view. Now for the pros and cons of this method. Now the main pro when compared to the previous method is the fact that it only zooms in on the scope itself, just like it should. So the area behind it stays nice and normal. Now the next pro when compared to the following method that we're going to see, compared to that one, this one is much better in terms of performance. So we just got a shader effect, the camera just renders once. And now of course for the cons, there is one potentially huge con depending on when you zoom in and you can see it exactly like that. If you zoom in just a small amount then everything looks pretty decent. However, the more you zoom in, the more pixelated the image becomes. Now that has to do with the fact that the image resolution is fixed to the normal resolution. So what this shader is doing is really just increasing the size of that image. It doesn't actually increase the image resolution. So the further you zoom in, the more pixelated and ugly it becomes. So if you want just a small amount of zoom, then it works pretty good. But the more you take it, the more intensive it becomes. There's a character all the way over there and there you go, it's just a pixelated mess. Okay, so this is the second method. It's pretty good and especially it's very performant. Now let's check out the very last method. You can probably guess what this method will be. Once again, we're going to use the super awesome render textures feature. I cover them in detail in another video if you want to learn more about them. Essentially, you can render a camera directly onto a texture. So for this third method, we're simply going to create a new camera. Then we're going to position it right in front. Now here, you could position it directly in there. So directly in front of the scope, or you can position it directly in front of the barrel. Then you just zoom in by lowering the FOV. Then you create a render texture. So a new create, create new render texture. And over here for the settings, the main one is the size. So this will depend based on your player's resolution and how big the scope is on the screen. So something like 1024 by 1024 is probably more than big enough. So we got the render texture and we just make sure that this camera renders onto this render texture. Okay, we can already see that the render texture contains what the camera can see. So this is really pretty much all we need. Now, in order to display the visual inside of our scope, we can just place a quad directly inside of the scope. And then for the visual, really, we just need to render our texture. And there you go. Yep, that does work. That is a view of our zoomed in camera. Now, there's only one slight issue here, which is that our quad is a square, but the scope is actually round. So you can see over here, it leaves on the corners. So that doesn't look too good. Now, one super easy way to fix this is with a simple alpha clip. So here is a very simple custom shader. All it really does is just takes a texture for the alpha clip mask and then feeds it over here onto the alpha and then also has an alpha clip threshold. So you just need to go onto the graph settings, make sure you enable alpha clip and then you can feed in the alpha and define the threshold. And if you do that and then over here on the alpha clip mask, if you select just a simple circular mask, so something with alpha zero on the outside and there you go, it does clip the edges so everything looks perfectly just on the center. All right, so the final thing is just in the script. Over here, all we need is really the exact same thing that we did on the film of view camera. So we can actually just reuse this script. We're just going to drag a different reference over here. So instead of dragging the main camera, we're going to drag the reference to our actual camera that is rendering onto the texture. Okay, so that's it, let's test. All right, so here we are. And as I bring the rifle up, and yep, there you go, the scope is indeed looking great. Now I press the button in order to zoom in even further, and there you go, it looks great. So I'm looking there, look in that corner, yep, looks great. Look at the character all the way over there, yep, I can see him. And yep, there you go, the scope doesn't look great. Now for the pros and cons. One of the pros is, just like you said, on this one I can zoom in exactly as much as I want, and as you can see, it doesn't have the pixelated problem like the previous method, so I can clearly look at that character all the way over there. Then this one also has an interesting property in that it works perfectly well even when the weapon is down. So look at that, even as I move, I'm still seeing all the view over there. So if I look all the way over here, yep, there you go. You can see that my weapon is indeed pointed towards the barrel. So that's an interesting, nice bonus from this method. Now, another pro is that since I'm using a second camera, I can actually do some tricky things with it. For example, I can use a different post-processing setup. I can add a simple depth of field effect onto the main camera. And with that, since the render texture is close to the camera, then it's not blurred, but everything else is. So there you go, that's another very nice way. So personally, I think that this is the best visual of all. Everything else is blurry and the scope is really nice, really zoomed in, so I can see everything nice and clear. 
Then if you wanted, you could push this even further in order to use a different post-processing on the actual camera that is filming the zoom. So you could essentially make the scope a thermal or a night vision while leaving the outer area looking normal. Now of course this approach does have one potential big con, which is performance. This is using a render texture in order to render the second camera. So essentially the whole scene needs to be rendered twice for this to work. Now if you're making PC games then that's probably not too big of a cost, but if you're making a mobile game then it does become a bit of an issue. But if you can afford that performance then clearly this is the best method of all. You've got two zooms, one on the scope and one on the outside, then you can zoom in further, everything looks great, nice effects, everything looks awesome. And again with this method when compared to the previous one you can zoom in a massive amount and everything looks nice and crisp. Alright so there you have it, three methods for doing a reference scope. Go with the first method if you need absolute performance or the simplest method possible. Go with the second one if you want to look a bit better than that. And go with the final method if you want the absolute best visuals possible. Now go ahead and pick the right one for your game. Again, if you're looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.